Welcome to John Gets Games. Today we'll be playing a full two-player game of Beer and Bread with my wife Jessica, who's going to join us here in the studio. We're going to start things off with a brief overview of the game, then we will play the whole game, teaching it as we go, and we'll finish with a brief discussion about how it went. Now before I go to all that, I would like to ask that if you enjoyed this video, that you please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. In addition to that, if you'd like to directly support the channel and gain access to a wide variety of exclusive perks, then please go to patreon.com slash Games. Some of those perks include watching my opinions episodes, where I talk about all the games that I'm playing recently, both the things I like and don't like. You can also gain access to some videos early and advertisement-free, and you can gain access to an exclusive podcast feed where you can hear audio versions of all of the vlogs that I make. Now, the final thing I'd like to ask is if while you're watching this video, you see a turn where you think we should have done something differently, or maybe you see us accidentally cheat, or if you just have thoughts about beer and bread in general, then please leave all those as comments down below because we'd love to see that kind of feedback. All right, let's now jump into the game. Hey, Jess, thanks for joining me in the studio. Hey, thank you for inviting me here from all the way down the hall. Yeah. So today we are playing Beer and Bread. This is a two-player only Euro game of multi-use cards, resource acquisition, and kind of combo building. Um, the game is called Beer and Bread, and the goal is to brew beer and bake bread. And we do that with cards. Now, the game is going to be six rounds long, and within each round we are going to be playing cards from our hand. And each card can be used in one of three different ways. The top of the card can be used for harvesting. You can put it off to the side and harvest those materials and put them into your storage. The middle part of the card can be used to actually make the thing, like in this case that's brewing beer, but you have to spend these materials from your storage to an off-camera supply, and then that'll give you essentially um, points, coins you're selling them. This would give five coins for beer, for example. And then the third thing that you can do with cards instead of the other two is you can slide them under the board like this as an upgrade, and that will affect that specific part of the game, and they're kind of organized well based off of the different things that we're going to be doing in the game. So yeah, we have these cards, and each one is going to be used in one of those three different ways. Sometimes we're actually going to use cards multiple times, and we'll explain that as we go, but I think we can now just jump right into the game. So as I said, it's six rounds long, or essentially six years, and we're going to alternate between fruitful years and dry years. Now, the mechanics of these two years are different, and we'll explain those as we go, but we'll start with the fruitful year explanation. Now, every round is split into four different phases, and I've actually taken care of the first and second phase already. The first phase is seeding, and in that, we are going to put resources from the off-camera supply onto the board, and these are the resources that we can actually interact with during this year. Uh, we put resources down equal to the green side of this indicator because that green matches up with the fruitful year icon. So we have seven wheat available, eight barley, six rye, and six hops. So that is the seeding phase, just getting this ready. Then we have the card phase, where each one of us randomly got five cards from the top of this deck. And as you can see, we actually know what type of card every card is from the back. It'll show bread or it'll show beer on it. So we can see that in each other's hands. So that finished the first two phases. And now we can go to the third phase, which is the action phase. And this is where most of the game actually happens. In the action phase, we start with a person who has the windmill token and they are going to do one action with a card from their hand. And as I mentioned in the overview, every card can be used in one of three different ways. I have the windmill token, so I get to do the first action. So these are my five cards. And I think I want to start by harvesting. I'm going to harvest with this card here. And as I mentioned in the overview, only the top part of the card matters for harvesting. Now, when you harvest, you put the card face up into a harvest column off to the side, and then you make the resources that are shown on that card. So this card shows one hops and one barley. So I will take a hops and a barley from the supply on the board. And then I have to store these in my storage. I can hold nine things at the moment. This can be expanded with upgrades that we'll talk about soon, but I can put these in here and you can rearrange in here as much as you want, but you are limited to this. And if you go over that limit, then potentially bad things happen and we'll explain those later on. Uh, so yeah, that has essentially finished my harvesting. There is the ability to harvest from previously harvested cards and uh, I'll explain that when we actually get there. So that's my turn. Alrighty, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to harvest with this card, which is going to give me one wheat and one barley. Nice. Now, after we've each taken one action, because it's a fruitful year, we are going to swap our hands. So you get these, and I get those, and once again, I do an action because I still have the windmill. The windmill potentially changes at the end of each year. Alright, these are the four cards that were given to me, and I think I'm going to harvest for a second turn in a row. 
and I'm going to harvest with this card here. Now that means I'm going to add this to my harvest column, and just like before, I'm going to get the resources printed on this card, so that is a water and then one barley. It's my second barley, but then I also will activate and gain all of the matching resources from the current card to the previously played cards in the display. Since there is a barley up here, that means I will activate that again and gain that barley, but I don't gain any more hops because there was no hops on this card that I just played. So I already have five resources and that is my second turn. I'm going to play this card for its upgrade action. Um, so I'm going to add this to my tableau and gain this advantage for the rest of the game. Whenever you collect any rye during one of your harvest and store actions, collect one additional rye. And this goes here since it's related to harvesting. Yeah, I'm bummed about that. I was really hoping you wouldn't do that. <laughs> I saw that going to you and I was like, maybe it'll pass back to me, but it didn't. So speaking of passing, we are going to pass the cards and I have to come up with a new plan. That was my plan for this turn if you somehow did something else. So these are the cards that came back to me and I think I am going to do an upgrade, but it's going to be this card here. Now, as you can see, it has that little hat on it and that icon is over here. And that means this upgrade is going to affect the brewing of beer and potentially the baking of bread. Now, if we look at the specifics of the card, it says whenever I brew beer or bake bread, I can spend three wheat as one barley or three barley as one wheat. And I can do that as often as I want. So I have some extra flexibility there, which uh, isn't too bad considering I do have three barley, although I don't have any other way to make extra wheat or barley. So I might want to keep that in mind. But either way, flexibility is nice. Okay, I am done. Although I do want to mention that when you do upgrades, you also can clean off your brewery and your bakery, removing beer and bread that you've already made to clear up those spots. Obviously, we haven't made any beer or bread just yet. So we're probably going to get to that in the second year of the game. So yeah, I'm done. Okay, I guess I'll just go ahead and collect another couple of barley for resources. So I take three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I already played a barley. Yeah, there's only one barley left. Uh, if you go to make something and it's not there, you just don't get it. <laughs> All right. Well, I am just doing a lot of harvesting in this first round, but I don't think that's too surprising. Just kind of getting resources to spend. I'm going to harvest this. That's going to get me a water, and it will also get me one rye. And I haven't explained this just yet, but when we go into the dry years, each of us are actually going to pull up all of the cards that we played into the harvest back into our hand, and then we're going to be drawing new ones from the top of the deck until we get up to five. So that means we're both essentially planning ahead, knowing we're going to have these cards in our hand for the next round, and I'm keeping that in mind uh, while I look at the resources that I'm making. I don't think I'm going to be baking any bread or brewing any ale in the first round, but I certainly want to in the next round, and I think I have a plan for that. So what I'm tempted to do is play this card because I've already played wheat and I've already and I have this that gives me extra rye every time I collect a rye but that's going to give me four resources and I only have four spots left yeah which doesn't leave me any room to take water that could get me into trouble yeah but I do think that it's the better option than the last card here so I'm going to take the risk and again because I've already played a wheat I'm getting two wheat, and I'm getting two rye because of my upgrade here. Yeah, every time you gain at least one rye in the harvest, you get an extra one. All right, and that's that turn, so we yep. switch hands. Well, I just have this one card, um, and I don't have the resources to bake this bread. I only have one rye, and I have more water than I need, but I don't have that extra rye. And my effect down here doesn't let me uh, do anything with rye, so I could put it over here. That would make me two hops and one wheat, but I wouldn't even be able to hold all of that. So I think, realistically, I'm going to be upgrading. This has a harvest effect, and it says you are always able to collect wheat, even if there is none left on the wheat field. So once again, if all these are gone, normally you can't get any more, but since I have this here, I can always gain access to wheat. I can just take it from the main supply over there. And that's pretty good, considering I have this effect that lets me spend three wheat as if it was one barley, so that extra flexibility could be nice. All right, that's my last action of the round. And I'm in pretty much the same boat. I uh, don't really want these resources since I have nowhere to put them. I can't produce this card, so I'm just going to go ahead and tuck it under. And it's almost the exact same effect except for with barley. So uh -huh. I'm always able to collect the barley even if there's none left on the field. 
Nice. All right. Well, that's it. We've played all five of our cards. So the action phase is done. And the last phase of the round is the windmill phase. In this one, we just check to see who has the fewest resources and that person gets the windmill. Uh, I have seven and you have nine. Obviously, I have fewer. So I'm going to keep this. If there was a tie, then the windmill would go to the person who did not have it in the last round. So yeah, I keep the windmill and we can now move into the second year out of six. So this is a dry year and we, of course, start things off with a seeding phase. Now, much like the fruitful year, we are going to put or remove resources over here. But since it's a dry year, we look to the red part. So this means we must put five wheat and we have five wheat. We also need to put four barley, or at least reduce or increase the resources till we get to four. We need to do the same over here, going to four, and then we have to remove one hop. So we just have less resources we can gain access to, although Jessica has functionally infinite barley access and I have functionally infinite wheat. Now we can go to the card phase, and the way this works is each of us are going to take the cards that we played as our harvest column, and those are going to go right into our hands. Then we are, um, in player order, going to draw cards from the top of the deck until we have five. So I have three that I played as harvest cards, so I'll take two more. And then in draw years, we also need to draw three cards from the top of the deck and put them over here in a face-up market. Now, the cards in the market are functionally a shared hand between Jessica and myself. We'll talk about that soon because I think it's likely we're going to be uh, going to the market at some point. All right, the card phase is done, so now we have the action phase. And the way this works is, once again, starting with the windmill player, uh, we're each going to do one turn back and forth, but we are not going to be passing our hands. These are going to be the hand of cards that we have, plus, again, potentially, the cards over here in this face-up market. So I get to do the first action. So these are my cards, and this is a card that I had in mind that I was essentially playing towards. I harvested this one in the last round, knowing that I could try to build towards having the resources to actually brew that beer. But I think I am actually going to bake this bread instead. Now, that means I have to put it over here onto this open bakery. If there was already bread here, I would not be able to uh, bake bread onto it. And now I have to spend these resources. So that is going to be two water and then three barley. And these are removed back to the general supply off camera, not over here on the board. And that's essentially all I have to do. This is going to give me five bread coins at the end of the game. And we're going to count these coins up once the game is over. Specifically, we're going to count up our bread coins and our beer coins, and then the number between those two that is lower is going to be our final score. So we're both trying to balance between brewing beer and baking bread to have the higher lower number in order to win the game. And that means currently my score is still zero because I have zero beer coins and five bread coins. All right, I'm done. In the last round, I played this card for the harvest action, so I got it back. And that's because I wanted to play it for its upgrade, which gives me an additional storage unit. Ooh. So I have another rooftop right here where I can dump stuff. Very nice. You can store 10 things instead of nine. Cool. So now it's my turn, and we don't pass the cards once again. So I just keep working down these cards. But also, these cards exist. So these cards on the market, we can swap a card from our hand with one of these, but then the card that we take from the market, we have to immediately use. We cannot bring it into our hand. So again, these are functionally a shared hand between the two of us. And yeah, I need to figure out what to do. I've kind of fulfilled my first plan of baking some bread. I have a couple resources. Now we need to start working towards the next one. Well, for this action, I think I'm going to upgrade and specifically put this one down. That has a harvest effect, and it says at the end of each seeding phase uh, of the year, I get to collect one barley from the board. Seeding phase is, again, when we reset the resources here on the board. So I can tuck this right under there, and then I can clean. So as I mentioned before, when you upgrade, you clean both the brewery and the bakery. You simply take all of the cards from them, and you then put them face down off to the side. Although for this playthrough, I think we're just going to put them right over here. Uh, Jessica is not allowed to look at the face of this for the rest of the game, but she is allowed to know how many beer and bread cards I have, and I can take a look at this at any time if I want to. Uh, that is important because this has cleared up the bakery so I can actually bake bread again, although I'm really not in a position to do that. Okay, I'm done. I've gotten myself into a little bit of a bind because as far as I can tell, pretty much every card requires water to produce the beer or the bread. Yeah. And I don't have any, yeah. <laughs> and so I need to get some water. But I only have 10 spots, and if I every card I have available to me with water collects a second resource at the same time, so yeah. I'll run out of storage. So I'm going to play this one. I'm going to put this card here, which is going to get me a water and a wheat. Yep. 
Um, and I'm going to store the water, but because I don't have room for it, I'm now forced to offer this wheat to John. Technically, you can uh, swap that with something else that's in your storage right now. But yeah, anything that doesn't fit in your storage, you have to offer to your opponent who has the option of taking it. Oh, actually, I'm going to do that then. Awesome. Because I have so much barley. So much barley. Do so you that... would not a barley, John? Yeah, I'll take a barley. Uh, I could forego this and toss it to the side, but I'll take a free barley. Okay. I am next, and I think I'm going to upgrade again. I'm going to upgrade with this card, and as you can see, it has coins on the bottom. That's because this is an endgame modifying card. It says, at the game end, I'm going to gain one extra coin for every card that was sold with a value of four or five coins, and we can peek at this and see that that does indeed match. So that effectively increases the coin value of this card and all future four and five coin cards when the game is over, so I probably want to try and target those because... That's going to be a little bit more efficient for me. Uh, I would clean, but there's nothing to clean up, so I'm done. I'm going to produce this little loaf of bread right here. So it's going to use this water, two barleys, and two wheats, which will go back into the supply. And this is going to go face down right here. Yeah. All right, I am next, and I think I am going to swap a card out with the market. In particular, I'm going to swap this one, and then I'm going to upgrade with this. That is a harvest action, and it says whenever I collect any water during a harvest and store action, I get one extra water. Water frequently is required in uh, large amounts, so I think that is a good thing to have. Well, that is a card I really wanted to play, <laughs> so I can't do that anymore. So instead, what I'm going to do is play this card for the resources. So putting that there, I get two water and a rye, and because of this upgrade, I get a second rye. Oh, yeah. Nice. I have the perfect card in my hand for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have one card left, and I think I'm just going to harvest to give myself some extra flexibility for the next round. This uh, is going to get me one water and then one barley. And then that says every time I collect at least one water, I get another one. So that is my final action of the round. All right. And with my final action, I am going to... Ah. Produce this beer. Brew some beer. So it costs two water and two wheat. You're winning. <laughs> yes, I am now winning because I have one of each. One of each. I have so I have zero a minimum points. of four points. Minimum of more than zero. All right, so we're both done playing our cards. So now it's the windmill phase. Uh, once again, the person with the fewest resources is going to get the windmill. Jessica has five to my six. So congrats. Uh, then in the dry years, we also discard all the cards from the markets and all of the cards from the harvest area. These go into a face-up discard pile over here, and that's two out of six rounds done. So we can move into the third round of the game and then deal out cards. We each get five cards. And then, yeah, we restock the supplies to the fruitful numbers. Nice. We also take all of the water that was spent in the previous round, and we put that back out onto the board to be used. As you can see, it says max in fruitful and dry years here for the water. Now, at this point, we just finished the seeding phase. I guess we went to the card phase as well, but at the end of the seed phase, I have an upgrade. It says that I can take one barley from the supply, so I will. And yeah, card phase is done. Now it's time for the action phase, and Jessica gets to go first. And since it's a fruitful year, we're once again going to be passing our hands uh, after each card play. <laughs> you like your cards? No. We found all of the storage units. <laughs> Good. I need them. All right. For my first action this year, I am going to play this card for the resources, so I'll collect one water and one wheat. All right. Well, these are my cards, and I was really hoping... That with resources and the variety that I had, I'd be able to make one of these, but I can't. I have wheat problems <laughs> in that I don't have any. I could spend three barley as if it was one wheat, but that is not enough to help me out in this moment. So I think I am going to be upgrading. And there are some good options in here. Uh, this one is a cleaning upgrade. It says whenever you remove bread cards from your bakery, you collect water. That's pretty nice. Uh, this is a fruitful year one. That says whenever you start your turn with one card left during a fruitful year, you draw an extra card and discard one. So extra variety there uh, when you get near the end of the year. But I think I'm just going to go with this. It's just going to increase my storage. Uh, I need 
different things and I need room for different things. So I'm going to slide this in, increasing my storage space by one. So I'm matching Jessica and that's my turn. All right, I think I'm going to go ahead and use this card for its upgrade. Whenever you remove any bread cards from your bakery while cleaning it, collect a water. Nice. Yep. And I'm going to do that right now because ah. I upgraded. So I'll take a water. Very nice. All right. These are the cards that Jessica just handed to me, and I can make one of them. So I think I'm going to go for it. Uh, that is this one. Uh, as an upgrade, if I did put it down here, that says I could hold an additional bread in my bakery before I need to clean, but I think I'm just going to brew some beer. That is two water, one barley, and one hop. Uh, that's a four coin, which means this will affect it, essentially turning it into a five coin card. So I can put that face down, and I'm done. So we can pass the cards. I'll go ahead and play this one to produce this beer. So it will cost me two waters, a rye, and a wheat. How many coins? Five. Nice. No, that was barley and wheat. Ah, yeah. You have a rye this problem. Goes... You have too much rye. <laughs> oh, I have some major rye problems. <laughs> I got myself in a little bit of a jam. All right, I think I'm going to harvest with this card primarily because I want to take it into my hand in the next dry year because it's only four resources for a five coin, which would be a six coin for me, and I just like that. So that's going to get me a hop, which I will need to actually make that beer. It also gets me a rye, which I don't need, but I still think this is a good plan. All right. I guess I'll just go ahead and play this. It's not really what I need. I don't know if it's actually building up for anything, but... It is what it is. A couple of barley. All right, now I've got these two cards. They both have extra storage on the bottom, and storage is good. I think I'm just going to go for that. I'm going to tuck this under, increasing my storage again, and then I can clean this off, and you get this card. And I'm going to go ahead and play this for the resources. Oh, yeah. So I get two waters and hops. Nice, that worked out well. This is my last card. And I think I'm going to upgrade with it, even though I might have rye problems. I have some extra storage. We have a lot of rye problems around here. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to tuck it over here. I'm actually going to turn this into two adjacent columns, just so it's a little bit easier for the camera to see. But that says at the end of the seeding phase, I'm going to gain a rye. So I get a free barley and a free rye um, at the end of the seeding phases for the rest of the game. Okay, that's it for our cards. So now the windmill phase. I have fewer resources, so I get the windmill, and time for the fourth year. So we start this off by taking, oh no, by seeding. That's right. So Which we, is going to be unseeding since it's a dry year. Yeah, we have to go down, so five wheat, and this one's already fine. We do have to bring out all of the water that was off to the side, though. And then at the end of the seeding phase, I'm going to gain a rye and a barley. Okay, so now the card phase. I'm going to take one card. Jessica, you're getting three. And then I will draw first because I have the windmill. And now you can refill. And then we get three cards in the face-up market. Okay, it's time for actions, and I get to go first. Looks like I'm a cheater. I drew one too many cards. <laughs> this is the last one I drew. I'm just going to slide it into the deck. All right, these are the five cards that I'm going to have for this round, although I could swap out with the market. I think I've got a plan, though, uh, that will hopefully end with me making both of these, which would be good. So I'm going to start by harvesting with this. That's going to get me one water plus another one. So that's two water. And then it will also get me a barley, which goes into my extra storage. Okay, I'm done. All right, well, once again, I seem to have gotten myself in trouble with not having enough storage. So I'm going to play this as an upgrade, which is another one of these additional storage units nice and i'm gonna clear off my beer now i'm really bummed because the beer version of this was available to me earlier in the game <laughs> and, and brewing beer <laughs> and i didn't put it down and now uh, i just keep having the right resources for beer i guess because i get gave myself a lot of barley earlier i don't know yeah well you're definitely motivated to bake bread now super motivated yeah it's just a matter of finding the cards yeah well, speaking of beer, I'm now going to brew this beer here. Uh, that takes a water. It also takes a barley and a hop, and it needs one wheat. 
I don't have any wheat, but this effect down here says I can spend three barley as if it was one wheat, and I have three barley. So that three barley turns into a wheat, and that is a five coin beer, which means it's effectively worth six points to me. Or six beer points, anyway. All right, I'm done. All righty. I'm going to play this card for the resources, so I'm going to take two barley. They lost two barley. It doesn't matter for me, though, because even if there weren't two, I would have been able to take it. Yes, yes, yes. Nice. All right, now it's my turn. And in order to bake this bread, I need that resource, and I can get it there. So I'm going to harvest here. That's going to get me two wheat. I think possibly the first two wheat I've taken this entire game. <laughs> but that could be wrong. It just feels like I haven't been a wheat person so far, but now I am. You have so many resources. <laughs> you are full. I am full. Oh, you could just finish that one. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm going to do. i just trying to decide which... <laughs> Holy cow, that's really good. Trying to decide that. which card to I want to put back. Oh, uh, sure. Yeah, no, that's really good. I'm trying to think of what you want. So... I'm really relieved that John did not take this card because I have I been building up the resources. I legitimately for this. did not notice. <laughs> I'm gonna swap it with this card. Probably and a mistake so not I'm to have counter drafted to... that. Yeah, I was kind of sweating it there. <laughs> Nine <laughs> coin bread. That is the best bread in the game, I think. Nice. Well, the reason I didn't see that is because I've been working on my own plan, and that involved baking my own bread. So this bread is going to take a water, the two wheat I just got last turn, and two rye, and I'm almost down to nothing at this point, and feels pretty good. So that is two bread and two beer made, so I'm, I'm keeping things pretty balanced, and you're doing the same. Okay, I'm done. All right, so on my turn, I am going to play this card for the resources. So I'm going to collect one wheat and one water. All right. All right, I have one card left, and I think I'm just going to use it to get a pile of resources that I hope to be able to use in the next round. Uh, I'm going to harvest with this, so that's going to get me one, two water, and then I'll get a third water from that. Then I would normally get um, two barley, but there is no barley left. It's, it's all gone. Uh, so if there was barley here, this actually would have gotten me eight resources for one card, which is crazy. But as it stands, I've just done three, and then over here, I'm going to get three wheat. So I take these two. And normally I wouldn't be able to get any more. However, I have this upgrade that says you're always able to collect wheat, even if there is none left in the field. So I can take the third one from the supply. I figure six resources for one card is a pretty good way to set myself up for the next round. Hopefully, we'll see if I could draw cards that need all these. I suppose three wheat can be one barley, so I have some flexibility there. And I am quite relieved because you once again didn't take the card that I wanted to play. <laughs> Which I put out here, so I probably should have just put a different one out there. I'm just there. kind of playing my own game here. I'm not... I, I need to be paying more I attention I mean, I to really put doing. this one out there because you already had water and wheat at yeah. the time, so I thought this would be the least attractive to you. I have the resources now to play this. Oh, jeez. So. Yeah, no, I... I need to pay more attention to that market. Like, I really need to. Nice. No, I'm full on both beer and bread. All righty. Well... That's the end of that round. That was great. That was really great for you. Um, so now the windmill is going to go to you because you have the fewest resources. These cards will all go away. And yeah, it's time for a fruitful year. Uh, you can seed and I will deal us cards. So the seeding phase is done. So now I can activate my upgrades. I will gain one barley and one rye. I've got everything except for hops. And it's time for actions. You get to go. All right, so this seems like a really good card for me. I'm going to play as an upgrade. It says, whenever you remove both beer and bread cards while cleaning your brewery or bakery, and bakery, collect two water. Oh, wow. Which I'm going to do now. Yeah. In the cleanup phase of that. So now I actually collect three water because I did a bread and then a bread and a beer. Yeah, that's really awesome. Well, it's now my turn, and I would love to make one of these cards, but both of my spots are blocked, so I should do an upgrade to clean these off. And I think I'm going to upgrade with this one. It has a bake or brew effect. It says whenever I bake or brew, I can spend two wheat as either a hop or a rye as often as I like, so I have even more flexibility. I have to admit, I don't 
love this upgrade, but I felt like it was better than the other options that I currently have in my hand. Um, this one, uh, this one would be really quite nice, but I don't think I want to tuck it. Uh, so yeah, I think I'm going to commit to this, and that cleans these off very importantly. And we can pass. This is an attractive card for its resources, so I'm going to play this. I have a lot of water. I might be getting myself in a water <laughs> jam now, but it's easy to spend water. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm going to also harvest. I'm going to play this one. I only have two spots, so that's why I'm doing this. Uh, I'm going to take one hop and then one rye. The rye in particular is the thing that I think I want. We'll see if the plan that I have is going to actually work. Uh, so yeah, that's my action. Well, I'm really excited that you didn't take this card because I was hoping to play it for the beer. So that cost me three water, two barley, and eight wheat. Nice. And this is seven points in my beer pile. It's pretty good. All right, it's my go, and I misremembered <laughs> the cards. I thought I needed this rye to get to three rye to play something, but I still can't. However, I think I accidentally backed into a better plan <laughs> by getting this hop. The hop ended up being crucial. So yeah, I'm going to brew a nine coin beer. That is three water, one barley, two wheat, and one hop. So that really cleared me out, but nine beer coins is, is the best. It doesn't get better than that, I don't think. Oh, you're oh, right. you're overweighted on your beer cards right now. Interesting, but yeah. yeah, I think I'm pretty happy about playing this for the resources because I'll gain two wheat, and I'll also gain two rye with my upgrade card. Yeah, nice. I'm definitely starting to have rye problems. All right, I've got these two cards, and I could upgrade, but I think I just want resources instead and I don't want to do this because that would get me three more rye and I already have three that would get me to six which is just way too much rye considering this card doesn't need a rye to actually play so I don't know this feels like maybe a little bit lackluster of a turn but I'm going to go here and I'm going to gain two wheat because I do have flexibility with wheat wheat can turn into all sorts of different things for me all right I mean, I'm pretty down with this card. I get a lot of resources, maybe too many resources, <laughs> but I get three wheat. Oh my gosh. Yep. There's only two. So ah, that's so actually kind of good for me. <laughs> and then I get two rye. So that works three out. rye, right? Because of this? Oh, right. Oh, okay. But so you're out. do you. But we're out. So you're fine. Yeah. So that actually worked out pretty perfectly. I, I don't have a lot of variety. No, you don't, but, but still, think, that is I'll a be okay. ton of stuff. I was really hoping the card that you passed me would be a decent harvest, but it's not. <laughs> I mean, I would get I mean, three hops. It is good for you next round because it uses three rye. That's a good point. <laughs> that is a good point. Although I would have no water or no barley. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, I can get some barley from these. Okay, you've talked me into it. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. That's going to be three hops. I also don't have much variety here, but uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I, I think you make a pretty solid point there. Um, awesome. That's the last action. So I actually have the fewest resources, so I get the windmill. And yeah, we're going into the final round of the game. It's a dry year, so we're going to pull these up. And then I have the windmill, so I'm going to draw first. Yikes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I have all bread. Well, that's good that I want to make bread. Um, so now you get to draw up. And then we get a market. And after the seeding phase, I am going to gain one barley and one rye. So I'm actually full. I kind of forgot about this. All right. Well, I have no water, which is problematic. But here we go. It's now time for the actions, and I get to go first. Oh, yeah. I mean, what do you do? I guess when you 
if you harvest water, you could always swap it out. Yeah, and then give uh, offer you when you have no empty spots. So yeah, if I'm so going to do so it, bad. this is the turn to do it. So these are my cards, and this is bread that I am absolutely going to be baking. Uh, it's possible that's it for what I'm actually going to be making in this game, but, but we'll just have to see. Now, in order to do that, I need a water. I do not have a water. I have a way to get the next barley that I need. So uh, in a perfect world, uh, getting water and barley would be great, but this is the only card in my hand that makes water, and out here, that's the only card that makes water as well. I think this is the one that I actually want to do, though, so I'm going to take one of these cards and swap it, and I think it's going to be this card here. Actually, I think it'll be this one. So I'm going to swap that with the market, and then this is just going to harvest. So that's going to get me one water plus one, so that is two water, and it will also get me one rye, and I have to fit this in. Obviously, I have too many things. I'm certainly going to swap out that rye. Actually, maybe I won't do that. I think instead I'll just swap out the hops. I don't think I actually need any hops. Doesn't look likely. So yeah, I'm going to put water, water, and then Jessica, you could pick any of these if you had any storage space, but <laughs> you don't, so you don't get them. You done? Yeah, yeah. All right. I should be no surprise to anybody if they saw what I played last round. I'm going to build this. <laughs> it's a monster. Or produce it. So I spend two rye, four wheat, and a water. Nice. There's got some room for me, too. Yes, it does. All right, next up, I think I am also going to bake bread. It's going to be this one. That's going to use three rye, uh, this barley, and then I'll spend three wheat in the place of the other barley, using this again. And then, of course, I need one water. And that is an eight-coin bread. I can flip that over, and I'm done. I'm going to play this card for its resources. I'll put this one in its place. And so I get... Hops and a wheat. All right, it's my go, and I'm going to play this as an upgrade. That says at the end of the game, for every two beer cards that I have sold, I gain one extra beer coin. So I can tuck that in over here. I've got a couple of those end game conditions, and then I can clean this off. Okay, I'm done. All righty. I'm going to play this for an upgrade. It's the only end game points I'm going to be able to get. We haven't been seeing a lot of those cards at the end here. Uh, it says for every two bread cards that you sold, gain one extra coin for bread. So I will just probably get one for that. But that allows me to clear off both of these. Yeah. And so I you've... don't think I really need it at this point, but that does technically get me three waters. <laughs> that's true. That's true. So you, I'm allowed to know the number of cards that you have. Right. You have three bread and four beer, and I've got three and three. So you've definitely done more than me, or at least maybe some of those cards are cheaper. I don't know. Well, it's back to me. I only have two actions left in the game. And uh, considering these are both bread, I certainly can't like make bread and also brew beer again. Also, unless I'm mistaken, I think I am within one point of balanced over here. I think I could get one more beer point, but I don't think I can actually make that happen with two card plays and the resources I currently have. Yeah, so I think instead... I'm just going to spend my last couple of turns making resources. And the reason for that is because if there is a full tie um, all the way to the end, then having more resources is the second tiebreaker. So I think I'm going to play towards that. Uh, I'm going to put this here, and that is just going to harvest me to wheat. And that's my second to last turn. All right. I don't remember if this matters or not as far as the balance oh my of my gosh. points. but <laughs> You're going to kick my butt. <laughs> The resources to produce this beer. So you've made two more cards than me. That, I think, spells my doom. But <laughs> I'll now play my last card. And as I said, I think I'm just going for a tiebreaker that certainly won't exist. Uh, I'm going to take two plus another one from the supply because of my upgrade. And then I'll get a barley. And that is me done. Well, that makes me a little sad because... I can't gain as many resources now because the wheat is out, but I will gain a water <laughs> and two rye. Awesome. So, yeah, that's the action phase done. Uh, the final windmill phase, we'll uh, discard all of these. 
we can discard these as well. And then we do pass the windmill. It's going to go to the person who has the fewest resources. And again, the second tiebreaker is the person who doesn't have the windmill. So I'm winning the second tiebreaker. However, the first tiebreaker, when we do final scoring, is whoever has the higher other number between their scores. Now, let's just do final scoring. All right. And I do get this card, even though I didn't sweep it up. That's correct. Yeah, because it goes over the there. action when you produce is actually produce and sell. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sold. Well, for final scoring, we do have a score pad, and on it, we are going to write the number of beer coins we've each gained, bread coins we've each gained, and then the extra coins we got from our upgrades. So, Jess, why don't you go first? Okay, so I have a lot of beer. Wouldn't I have loved this to have been... The beer one? The beer <laughs> one. So I have, let's see, 10, 15, 30. 30 points in beer? I do not have as much in bread. I have 15 plus 8, 23. Okay. And then what are your points from this? Just get one extra point because I didn't get to the fourth bread as much as one I would have One extra bread point? To. Yeah, one extra bread point. Okay, cool. So I'll my score right here. is so, 24. Yes. So now I can score mine. Uh, for the beer, I get 9 plus 9. So that's 18 for beer. A lot less than Jessica's 30. <laughs> and then for bread, I have 18 for that as well. A lot less than Jessica's 23. <laughs> and then over here, I get one extra coin for every four and five uh, for those specific types. So it looks like I have two extra beer coins. Plus for every two beer cards I get, I get one extra beer coin. I have three beer cards, so I get three extra beer. And then uh, over here, I've got two fives. So that's two extra red coins. And that means my score, as I said, I was one off between them. I've got 21 beer and just 20 bread. So you win, Jess. 24 to 20. 24 to 21. No, right. You're right. It's the lower one. It's the lower one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good uh, game. I would have liked to have had your Yes. <laughs> scoring. I just, I, I would have liked to have played one more bread, but I would have it's liked just not, to as well. It's interesting. It's just not the resources that I had available. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure somebody watching this will be like, oh, you could have done this or that. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm only four points behind you, which feels a little bit better. Once I realized you were putting two more cards, actually three more cards. No, no, two more than I did. I got really worried. Um, I, I figured I was sunk, but I thought I was going to get skunked. And fortunately, that didn't happen, although your 30 is enormous compared to my 18. Yeah, I mean, beers. I did this last, and I got eight points for it, so I would have been at 22, which would have been the lower of the two. So uh, it was good that I played it, but it was a little excessive to spend resources. But I didn't have... There wasn't a way I was going to be able to do another bread and that. So. Yeah, and and I think this definitely highlights the counter drafting that you are, are probably supposed to do more of in this game. Um, I, there were a couple of moments where I really could have, you know, <laughs> knocked your plan down by mm -hmm. by drafting a card, uh, either when we were passing the cards back and forth or just you know taking a card from the market over here. And I wasn't playing nice. I just legitimately was so focused on my own plans and the things I was trying to do that I I didn't notice the low hanging. Uh, uh, interactive the low hanging fruit. hops. Yes, the low hanging hops. Yeah, yeah. Well, th these scores are definitely bigger. We we played this one other time, and that one went to a full tie. I just think it's kind of funny to show uh, where we both had twenty. Uh, twenty beers. We both had twenty beer, and we both had twenty bread. Twenty one breads. Yeah. And we both had twenty one bread, and so it went to that second tiebreaker. It, it really didn't this time. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for uh, joining me for this game, Jess. Yeah, and thank you for playing it with me. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to johngetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.